Apocryphal Gospel of John Chapter 1 1. The Teaching of the Savior and the Revelation of the Mysteries and Things Hidden in Silence Things that He Taught His Disciple John 2. One day, when John, the brother of James, the sons of Zebedee, went up to the temple, it happened that a Pharisee named Aramanios came to him and said, Where is your teacher whom you have been following? 3. John said to him, He has returned to the place from which he came. 4. The Pharisee said to him, this Nazarene has seriously deceived you, has filled your ears with lies, has closed your minds, and has turned you away from the traditions of your fathers. 5. When I, John, heard these comments, I left the temple for a solitary place. 6. I was very sad and said to myself, how was the Savior chosen? Why was he sent into the world by his father? 7. Who is his father who sent him? To what kind of eternal kingdom will we go? 8. For what did he mean when he said, This eternal kingdom to which you will go is a copy of the imperishable eternal kingdom. But he did not teach us what kind of kingdom it was. 9. While I was thinking about this, behold, the heavens were opened. All creation under heaven was illuminated, and the world trembled. Ten I was afraid, and behold, I saw within the light a child standing at my side. Eleven. As I watched, he became like an older person. Again his appearance changed and became like that of a servant. Twelve. It was not that there were several people before me, but there was a figure with several forms within the light. 13. These different forms became visible one after another, and three forms appeared. 14. He said to me, John, John, why do you doubt? Why do you fear? Are you not familiar with this figure? 15. So do not be faint-hearted. I am with you always. 16. I am the Father. I am the Mother. I am the Branch. I am the Incorruptible and the Immaculate. 17. I have come to tell you about what is, what was, and what is to come, so that you may understand what is invisible and what is visible, and to teach you about perfect humanity. 18. Now therefore, lift up your head, that you may understand the things I will tell you today, and that you may relate these things to your spiritual friends, who are of the unshakable race of perfect humanity. Chapter 2 1. When I asked him if he could understand this, he said to me, The one is a sovereign who has nothing over him. 2. He is God and Father of all, the invisible one who is over all, who is imperishable, who is pure light that no eye can see. 3. He is the invisible spirit. One should not regard him as a god or equal to a god, for he is greater than a god, for he has nothing above him and no lord over him. 4. He does not exist within anything that is inferior to him, for everything exists only within him. 5. He is eternal, since he needs nothing, for he is absolutely complete. He has never lacked anything to be complete, but he has always been absolutely complete in the light. 6. He is illimitable. 
since there is nothing before him to limit him. He is unfathomable, since there is nothing before him to fathom him. 7. He is immeasurable, since there was nothing before him to measure him. He is unobservable, since nothing has observed him. He is eternal, and eternally existing. 8. He is inexpressible, since nothing could comprehend him to express him. He is unnameable, since there is nothing before him to give him a name. 9. It is the immeasurable, pure, holy, brilliant light. It is inexpressible, and it is perfect in its immortality. 10. It is not that it is part of perfection, or of blessedness, or of divinity. It is much greater. 11. It is neither corporeal nor incorporeal. It is neither great nor small. 12. It is impossible to say, how much is it, or what kind is it, for no one can understand it. 13. It is not one among many things that exist. It is much greater. 14. It is not that it is really greater, but since it is in itself, it is not a part of the worlds or of time. For anything that is part of a world was once produced by something else. 15. No time was allotted to it, since it receives nothing from anyone that would be alone. 16. The one who exists first does not need anything from one who is later. On the contrary, the later looks up to the first in its light. 17. For the perfect one is majestic. He is pure and immeasurably great. 18. He is the world that gives a world, the life that gives life, the blessed one that gives blessedness, the knowledge that gives knowledge, the good that gives goodness, the mercy that gives mercy and redemption, the grace that gives grace. 19. Not that he is really so, but that he gives immeasurable and incomprehensible light. 20. What shall I tell you about him? His eternal kingdom is imperishable. It is calm, it is silent, it is at rest, and it is above all. 21. He is the head of all the worlds and he sustains them through his goodness. 22. Yet we would not know, we would not understand what is immeasurable, were it not for one who has come from the Father and has told us these things. Chapter 3 1. For though the perfect one contemplates himself in the light that surrounds him, this is the spring of the water of life that produces all the worlds of all kinds. 2. The perfect one contemplates his image, sees it in the spring of the spirit, and falls in love with the luminous water. This is the spring of pure luminous water that surrounds the perfect one. 3. It is thought made active, and she who appeared in the presence of the Father in bright light came forth. 4. She is the first power, she preceded everything, and came forth from the mind of the Father as the prior thought of everything. 5. Her light resembles the light of the Father. As the perfect power, she is the image of the perfect and invisible Virgin Spirit. 6. She is the first power, the glory, Barbello, the perfect glory, among the worlds, the emerging glory. 7. She glorified and praised the Virgin Spirit because she had come forth 
through the Spirit. 8. She is the first thought, the image of the Spirit. She became the universal womb because she precedes everything, the common Father, the first humanity, the Holy Spirit, the triple male, the triple power, the androgen with three names, the eternal kingdom among invisible beings, the first to come forth. 9. Barbello asked the invisible virgin spirit to give him foreknowledge, and the spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, foreknowledge appeared and stood beside forethought. Foreknowledge proceeds from the thought of the invisible virgin spirit. Ten Barbello glorified the spirit and the perfect power, for through her he had been born. Eleven. She again asked to be given immortality, and the spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, immortality appeared and stood beside forethought and knowledge. Twelve. She glorified the invisible and Barbello, for through her he had been born. 13. Barbello asked to be given eternal life, and the invisible spirit agreed. 14. When the spirit agreed, eternal life appeared, and they stood together and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbello, for through her they had been born. 15. She again asked to be given truth, and the invisible spirit agreed. 16. Truth appeared, and they stood together and glorified the good invisible spirit and Barbello, for through her they had been born. 17. This is the kingdom of five of the Father, it is the first humanity, the image of the invisible spirit, that is, the previous thought, Barbello thought, together with previous knowledge, immortality, eternal life, and truth. 18. This is the androgynous kingdom of the five. This is the kingdom of the ten. This is the Father. Chapter 4. 1. The father penetrated Barbello with a glance, with the pure bright light that surrounds the invisible spirit. Second Barbello conceived, and the father produced a ray of light that looked like the blessed light, but was not as bright. 3. This ray of light was the only offspring of the common father that had come forth and the only offspring, and the only offspring of the Father, the pure light. 4. The invisible virgin spirit rejoiced at the light that was produced, which came forth first from the first power, the forethought, or Barbello. 5. The Father anointed her with goodness until she was perfect and completely good, for the Father anointed her with the goodness of the invisible spirit. The offspring was in the presence of the Father during the anointing. 6. When the offspring received this from the Spirit, he immediately glorified the Holy Spirit and the perfect forethought, for through her he had been born. 7. The branch asked to be given mind as a partner to work with, and the invisible spirit agreed. 8. When the spirit agreed, mind appeared and stood beside Christ and glorified Christ and Barbello. 9. All these beings, however, were born in silence. 10. Mind desired to create something through the word of the invisible spirit. Its will became actual and appeared with mind while the light glorified it. 11. The word followed the will. For Christ, the self-produced God, 
created everything through the word, twelve eternal life, will, mind, and foreknowledge united and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbello, for through it they had been born. 13. The Holy Spirit brought the divine, self-produced branch of the Spirit and Barbello to perfection. 14. Then the branch was able to place itself before the mighty, invisible virgin Spirit as God, the self-produced Christ, whom the Spirit had honored with great acclamations. 15. This branch came forth through the forethought. The invisible virgin spirit placed this true, self-produced God above all and made all authority and inner truth subject to him. 16. Then the branch was able to understand the universe which is called by a name greater than all names, for that name will be said only to those who are worthy of it. Chapter 5 1. Now from the light Christ and from immortality, by the grace of the Spirit, came the four stars, which are derived from the God produced by himself. He looked around and made the stars stand before him. 2. The three beings present are will, thought, and life. The four powers are understanding, grace, perception, and reflection. 3. Grace dwells in the eternal realm of the star Armazel, who is the first angel. These three realms are also there, grace, truth, and form. 4. The second star is Oroyel, and it has been named above the second eternal realm. These three realms are also there, afterthought, perception, and memory. 5. The third star is Devathai, and it has been named above the third eternal realm. These three realms are also there, understanding, love, and idea. 6. The fourth eternal realm has been installed for the fourth star, Eleleth. These three realms are also there, perfection, peace, and Sophia. 7. These are the four stars that stand before the self-produced God, and the twelve eternal realms that stand before the great branch, Christ produced by himself by the will and grace of the invisible spirit. 8. The twelve realms belong to the self-produced branch, and thus everything was established by the will of the Holy Spirit through the self-produced. 9. Again, from the foreknowledge of the perfect mind, through the expressed will of the invisible spirit, and the will of the self-produced, came the perfect human, the first revelation, the truth. 10. The virgin spirit gave the human Pigaratamas a name, and named Pigaratamas for the first eternal realm of the great self-produced Christ, together with the first star, Armazel. 11. The powers are there as well. The invisible also gave Pigaratamas an unconquerable power of mind. Pijaradamas glorified and praised the invisible spirit, saying, Everything has been born through you, and everything will return to you. 13. I will praise and glorify you, and the self-produced, and the eternal realms, and the three, father, mother, offspring, and perfect power. 14. Pijaradamas appointed a son, Seth, to the second eternal realm, together with the second star, Oroyel. 15. To the third eternal realm was destined the family of Seth, with the third star, 
Davithai. The souls of the saints were destined there. 16. To the fourth eternal realm were destined the souls of those who were ignorant of the divine fullness. They did not immediately repent, but continued to be ignorant for a time, and then repented later. 17. They are with the fourth star, Alaleth, and are creatures who glorify the invisible spirit. Chapter 6 1. Now Sophia, who is the wisdom of afterthought and who represents an eternal realm, conceived a thought. She had this idea herself, and the invisible spirit and the forethought were also reflected in her. 2. She wanted to give birth to a being like herself, without the spirit's permission. The spirit had not given approval. Without her lover, and without her consideration. 3. Her partner did not give his approval. She found no one who agreed with her, and she considered this matter without the spirit's permission or any knowledge of what she had decided. 4. Nevertheless, she gave birth to a child, and, because of the unconquerable power within her, her thought was not a vain thought. 5. But something came out of her that was imperfect and unlike her in appearance, for she had produced it without her lover. It did not look like its mother, and it had a different form. 6. When Sophia saw what her desire had produced, she turned into the form of a serpent with the face of a lion. Her eyes were like flashing lightning. 7. She threw him away from her, out of that kingdom, so that none of the immortals would see him, for she had produced him ignorantly. 8. She surrounded him with a bright cloud and set a throne in the middle of the cloud so that no one would see him except the Holy Spirit, who is called the Mother of the Living. 9. She named her offspring Haldabaos. Chapter 7 One Haldabaos is the first ruler who received great power from his mother. Then he left her and went away from the kingdoms where he was born. Kikwau. He was strong and created for himself other kingdoms by means of a bright flame of fire that still exists. 3. He coupled himself with the folly that is in him and produced his own authorities. 4. The name of the first is Athoth, whom generations of human beings call. The second is Harmas, who is the jealous eye. The third is Kalila Umbri. Five, the fourth is Yabel. The fifth is Adonaios, whom they call Sabaoth. The sixth is Cain, whom generations of human beings call the sun. Six. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is Abrissin. The ninth is Yobel. Seven, the tenth is Armupiel. The eleventh is Melchior Adonin. The twelfth is Belias, who is over the depths of hell. Eight. Jaldabaoz appointed seven kings, one for each sphere of heaven, to reign over the seven heavens, and five to reign over the deep. He shared his fire with them, but he did not give up any of the power of the light that he had taken from his mother. For he is a being of ignorant darkness. 10. When the light mixed with the darkness, it made the darkness brighter. When the darkness mixed with the light, it darkened the light. 11. The result was neither light nor darkness, but rather gloom. 12. This shadowy ruler has three names. The first name is Jaldabaos. The second is Saklas. The third is is Samael. 13. He is evil because of the folly that is in him, 
For he said, I am God, and there is no other God but me, because he did not know where his own strength came from. 14. The rulers created for themselves seven powers. The powers in turn created for themselves six angels each, until there were 365 angels. 15. These are the names of the potentates and their corresponding appearances. 16. The first is Athoth, and he has the face of a sheep. The second is Eloios, and he has the face of a mule. The third is Astaphaos, and he has the face of a hyena. 17. The fourth is Yao, and he has the face of a seven-headed serpent. The fifth is Sabaoth, and he has the face of a dragon. The sixth is Adonan, and he has the face of an ape. 18. The seventh is Sabataios, and he has a face of flaming fire. This explains the seven days of the week. A 19. Jaldabaoth had many faces besides all these, so he could show whatever face he wanted when he was among the angels. 20. He shared his fire with them and ruled over them because of the glorious power he had from the light of his mother. That is why he called himself God and despised the kingdom from which he came. 21. He joined seven of his powers of thought with the authorities that were with him. When he spoke, it was done. He named each of his powers, starting with the highest, 22. The first power is goodness, and is with the first authority, Athoth. The second power is previous thought, and is with the second authority, Eloios. The third power is divinity, and is with the third authority, Astaphaios. 23. The fourth power is lordship, and is with the fourth authority, Yao. The fifth power is the kingdom, and is with the fifth authority, Sabaoth. The sixth power is jealousy, and is with the sixth authority, Adonin. 24. The seventh power is understanding, and is with the seventh authority, Sabataios. These beings have spheres in the heavenly realms. 25. The powers were given names from the glory above, but these names could destroy the powers. 26. For although the names given to them by their Creator were powerful, the names they received from the glory above could cause destruction and loss of power. That is why they have two names. 27. Haldabaoth organized everything according to the pattern of the first eternal realms that had been born, for he wanted to create beings who were like the imperishables. 28. It is not that he had seen the imperishables, but the power that is in him that he had taken from his mother produced the pattern for the order of the world. 29. When he saw the creation all around him and the multitude of angels around him who had come out from him, he said to them, I am a jealous God, and there is no other God besides me. 30. But by making this statement, he suggested to the angels who were with him that there is another God. For if there were no other God, of whom would he be jealous? Chapter 8 1. Then the mother began to move back and forth. She realized that she was lacking something when the brightness of the light diminished. She became dark because her lover had not cooperated with her. Sue, I said, Lord, what does it mean that she moved back and forth? 3. The Lord laughed and said, Do not suppose that it happened just as Moses said 
on the waters. No, when she recognized the evil that had taken place and the theft that her son had committed, she repented. For, although in the darkness she had forgotten her ignorance, she began to be ashamed and agitated. This agitation is the movement back and forth. 5. The arrogant one took power from his mother. He was ignorant, for he believed that there was no other power except his mother. He saw the multitude of angels he had created and exalted himself above them. Tzat 6. When the mother realized that this dark shadow had been born imperfectly, she realized that her lover had not cooperated with her. She repented with many tears. 7. The entire realm of the fullness of the invisible virgin spirit heard her prayer of repentance and offered praises for her, and the Holy Spirit poured out some of his fullness upon her. 8. For her lover had not come to her before, but now he came to her, passing through the realm of fullness in order to be able to restore to her what she lacked. She ascended not to her own eternal realm, but instead to a position just above her son. She would remain in this ninth heaven until she restored what she lacked. 10. A voice called out to her. Then she said, I am the Son of God who is in heaven. From the exalted heavenly realm, humanity exists, and the offspring of humanity. 11. The first ruler, called Abaos, heard the voice and thought that it had come from his mother. He did not realize its origin. 12. It came from his holy father the completely perfect forethought, the image of the invisible, that is, the Father of all, through whom everything was born, the first humanity. 13. She taught these things and revealed herself in human form. 14. The entire kingdom of the first ruler trembled and the foundations of hell shook. The bottom of the waters above the material world was illuminated by the image that had appeared. 15. When all the authorities and the first ruler beheld this appearance, they saw the entire bottom because it was illuminated, and through the light they saw the shape of the image in the water. Chapter 9-1 Haldabao said to the authorities who were with him, Come, let us create a human being in the image of God and in the likeness of ourselves, so that this human image may give us light. 2. They created with their powers and copied the features that had appeared. Each of the authorities contributed a psychic feature corresponding to the figure of the image they had seen. 3. They created a being like the first perfect humanity and said, Let us call him Adam, so that his name may give us the power of light. 4. The powers began to create. The first power, goodness, created a soul of bone. The second previous thought created a soul of sinew. The third divinity created a soul of flesh. 5. The fourth lordship created a soul of marrow. The fifth kingdom created a soul of blood. The sixth jealousy created a soul of skin. The seventh understanding created an eyelid soul. 6. The host of angels waited and received these seven psychic substances from the authorities. Then they were able to create a network of limbs and a trunk, with all parts appropriately arranged. 7. 
The first angel began by creating the head. At Araphaopi, Abron created the head. Menegastroth created the brain. Asterechme the right eye. Thaspomoka the left eye. Yeronumos the right ear. Bisum the left ear. Eight. Akiarim the nose. Banan Ephraim the lips. Amen the teeth. Ibican the molars. Basiliadim the tonsils. Achchan the uvula. Nine. Adaban the neck, Chaman the vertebrae, Dirko the throat, Tibar the right shoulder, the left shoulder, Mini Archon the right elbow, the left elbow, Tenabitrian the right palm, Uanthan the left palm, Cruz the right hand, Belwai the left hand, Trineo the fingers of the right hand, Balbel the fingers of the left hand, Crima the nails of the fingers. 11. Astrops the chest right. Baraf the left breast. Baum the right armpit. Ararim the left armpit. Aretch the belly. Thou the navel. Senefim the abdomen. 12. Arakathopi the right ribs. Zabito the left ribs. Barias the right hip. Phnuth the left hip. Aben Lenarkai the marrow, Shnumenonor in the bones, thirteen Gesole the stomach, Agramalma the heart, Baino the lungs, Sostropol the liver, Anesimalar the spleen, Thaupithro the intestines, Byblo the kidneys, fourteen Roror the tendons, Tafrio the back, Ipospo Boba the veins, Binaborin the arteries, Atoimen Psephei, the breathing in all the members, and Thoilin all the flesh. 15. Baduk the vagina on the right, Arabai the penis on the left, Ilo the testicles, Sorma the genitals, Gormakayo Klabar the right thigh, Nebrith the left thigh. 16. Serum the muscles of the right leg, Asaklas the muscle on the left. Ormayoth the right leg, Imanun the left leg, Canucks the right shin, Tupalon the left shin, Seventeen Achiel the right knee, Phenime the left knee, Phyothrom the right foot, Boabel its toes, Trechun the left foot, Fikna its fingers, Mayamai the nails of the toes, Labernium, Eighteen. The angels named over all these parts of the psychic body are Athoth, Harmas, Kalila, Yabel, Sabaoth, Cain, Abel. 19. Other angels work on the limbs, on the head, Dialimodraza, on the neck, Yamiax, on the right shoulder, Yakuweeb, on the left shoulder, Urten on the right hand, Odidi on the left, Arbao, twenty on the fingers of the right hand, Lampno on the fingers of the left hand, Likafar on the right chest, Barbar on the left chest, Imai on the chest, Pisandraptis on the right armpit, Kode on the left armpit, Odior, twenty one on the right ribs, Asphyxix on the left ribs, Sunogchuda on the belly, Aruf on the uterus, Sabalo on the right thigh, Charcharb on the left thigh, Chthayon on all the genitals, Bathanath, twenty-two on the right leg, Shu on the left leg, Charcha on the right shin, Aorer on the left shin, Toichea on the right knee, Aol on the left knee, Sharoner, twenty-three on the right foot, Bastan on his toes, Archenchtha on the left foot, Marefnunth and his fingers, Abrana. Twenty-four. Seven angels ruled over all of it, Michael, Uriel, Asmenatus, Saphasatoel, Armurium, Richram, 
Amiorps. 25. Other angels ruled over the senses, Archindecta, over assimilation, Deitherbathas, over imagination, Oma, over disposition, Akiaram, over all impulse, Riaram Nacho. 26. The four sources of the demons that are in the whole body are called heat, cold, humidity, dryness, and the mother of all of them is matter. 27. He who is lord over heat is Phloxifa. He who is lord over cold is Ororothos. He who is lord over what is dry is Aramacho. He who is lord over humidity is Athuro. 28. The mother establishes Onorthocras among them, for she is unlimited and mixes with all of them. Indeed, she is matter, for through her the demons are nourished. 29. The four principal demons are Ephememphi, the demon of pleasure, Yoko, the demon of desire, Nenentofni, the demon of pain, Blaumen, the demon of fear. The mother of all of them is sensation, Auchepitpo. She from these four demons have come passions. From anguish come jealousy, envy, pain, conflicts, troubles, hardness of heart, anxiety, sorrow, and so on. 31. From pleasure come much evil, vanity, and the like. 32. From desire come anger, rage, bitterness, intense lust, greed, and the like. 33. From fear come terror, servility, anguish, and shame. 34. All these passions resemble what is valuable as well as what is evil. Anaro, the head of the material soul, understands its true nature, for she dwells with sensation, auchipipto. 35. This is the number of angels. In total there are 365. All of them work together until they complete it each of the members of the psychic and material body. 36. There are other angels over the remaining passions, and I have not told you about them. If you want to know about them, the information is recorded in the Book of Zoroaster. Chapter 10 1. All the angels and demons worked together until they shaped the psychic body. But for a long time, their creation did not stir or move at all. 2. When the mother wanted to regain the power she had given to the first ruler, she prayed to the most merciful father of all. 3. With a holy command, the father sent five stars to the kingdom of the angels of the first ruler. 4. They advised him with this purpose in mind, so that they could regain the power of the mother. 5. They said to Jaldabaoz, Blow a little of your spirit into Adam's face, and then the body will rise. 6. He breathed his spirit into Adam. The spirit is the power of his mother but he did not realize this, because he lives in ignorance. 7. Thus the power of the mother left Jaldabaos and entered the psychic body that had been made like the one that is from the beginning. 8. The body moved and became powerful, and it was illuminated. 9. Immediately, the rest of the powers became jealous, although Adam had been born through all of them, and they had given their power to this human, Adam was, nevertheless, more intelligent than the creators and the first ruler. 10. When they realized that Adam was enlightened and could think more clearly than they, and was free from evil, 
they took Adam and threw him into the lowest part of the entire material realm. 11. The blessed, benevolent, merciful father felt compassion for the power of the mother that had been taken away from the first ruler, for the rulers might be able to subdue the sensitive psychic body once more. 12. With a benevolent spirit and great mercy, the father sent help to Adam, an enlightened afterthought of the father that was called life. 13. She worked with all that was created, working with it, restoring its fullness, teaching about the descent of the seed of light, teaching that the path of ascent is the same as the path of descent. 14. The enlightened afterthought was hidden within Adam so that the rulers would not recognize it. Then the afterthought could return what the mother lacked. Chapter 11 1. The Human Being Adam was revealed through the bright shadow within, and Adam's ability to think was greater than that of all the creators. 2. When they raised their eyes, they saw that Adam's ability to think was greater than their own, so they devised a plan with a whole host of rulers and angels. 3. They took fire, earth, and water, and combined them with the four fiery winds. They beat them together and made a great commotion. 4. The rulers brought Adam into the shadow of death so that they could produce a figure again, but now of earth, water, fire, and the spirit that comes from matter, that is, from the ignorance of darkness and desire and their own contrary spirit. 5. This figure is the tomb the newly created body that these criminals put the human as a fetter of oblivion. 6. Thus Adam became a mortal human being, the first to descend and be set apart. 7. The afterthought illuminated within Adam, however, would rejuvenate Adam's mind. 8. The rulers took Adam and placed Adam in paradise. They said, Eat and be merry, but its pleasure is bitter and its beauty is perverse. 9. Its pleasure is a trap, its trees are evil, its fruit is deadly poison, its promise is death. 10. They place their tree of life in the middle of paradise. 11. I will teach you the secret of their life as it relates to the plan they devised and the nature of their spirit. The root of their tree is bitter, its branches are death, its shadow is hatred, a snare is in its leaves, its buds are evil ointment, its fruit is death, desire is its seed, and it sprouts in darkness. 13. The abode of those who taste of this tree is hell, and darkness is their resting place. 14. But the rulers stood before what they call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in reality the illuminated afterthought. 15. They stood there so that Adam would not behold its fullness, and thus discover the shameful nakedness of Adam himself. 16. I was the one, however, who made them eat. 17. I said to the Savior, Lord, was it not the serpent who commanded Adam to eat? 18. The Savior laughed and said, The serpent commanded them to eat of wickedness, pregnancy, lust, and destruction, so that Adam would be useful to the serpent. 19. Adam knew of the disobedience against the first ruler, because the enlightened afterthought within Adam 
restored Adam's mind to be greater than that of the first ruler. 20. The first ruler, in turn, wanted to regain the power that he himself had passed on to Adam. So he cast forgetfulness upon Adam. 21. I said to the Savior, What is this forgetfulness? 22. The Savior said, It is not as Moses wrote and you heard. For he said in his first book, He made Adam fall asleep. Rather, this forgetfulness caused Adam to lose all sense. 23. Thus said the first ruler through the prophet, I will make your mind slow, so that you will not be able to understand or discern. Chapter 12 1. Then the enlightened afterthought hid itself within Adam. The first ruler wanted to take it from Adam's side, but the enlightened afterthought cannot be grasped. 2. Although darkness pursued it, it did not seize it. The first ruler took some of Adam's power and created another figure in the form of a woman, like the afterthought that had appeared. 3. It produced the power that it had transferred from the original human being to its female creature. 4. However, it did not happen in the way that Moses said, Adam's rib. 5. Adam saw the woman at his side. Immediately, the enlightened afterthought appeared and removed the veil that covered his mind. 6. The intoxication of darkness left him. He recognized this being that was like him and said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 7. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and join his wife, and the two will become one flesh. 8. For a lover will be sent to him, and he will leave his father and mother. Chine. Our sister Sophia is the one who descended in an innocent way to give him back what he lacked. For this reason, she was called life, that is, the mother of the living. 10. Through the sovereign forethought and through her the living have tasted perfect knowledge. 11. As for me... I appeared in the form of an eagle on the tree of knowledge, which is in reality the afterthought of the pure, illuminated forethought. 12. I did this to teach the humans and to awaken them from deep sleep. 13. For the two of them were fallen, and they realized that they were naked. 14. The afterthought also appeared to them as light and awakened their minds. Chapter 13 1. When Jaldabaoth realized that the humans had rejected him, he cursed their land. He found the woman as she was preparing for her husband, who was lord over her. 2. He did not know the mystery that had been born through the sacred order. 3. The two humans were afraid to denounce Jaldabaoth, but he showed his own ignorance to his angels. 4. He expelled the humans from paradise and enveloped them in thick darkness. 5. The first ruler saw the young woman standing next to Adam and observed that the enlightened afterthought of life had appeared in her. However, Jaldabaoth was full of ignorance. 6. So when the forethought of everyone realized what was happening, he sent emissaries and they stole Eve's life. 7. The first ruler raped Eve and fathered on her two sons, a first and a second. 
Elohim, and Yahweh. 8. Elohim has the face of a bear. Yahweh has the face of a cat. 9. One is righteous, the other is unjust. 10. He placed Yahweh over fire and wind, and he placed Elohim over water and earth. 11. He called them by the names of Cain and Abel, for he intended to deceive. 12. Until today, copulation has persisted because of the first ruler. He planted lust for reproduction inside the woman who was with Adam. 13. Through copulation, the first ruler produced duplicate bodies and breathed into them part of his contrary spirit. 14. He placed these two rulers over the elements, so that they could rule over the bodily grave. 15. When Adam knew what his own foreknowledge was like, he produced a son like the offspring of humanity. He called him Seth, just like the offspring of the eternal realms. 16. In like manner, the mother sent forth her spirit, which is like her, and is a copy of what is in the kingdom of fullness, for she was preparing a dwelling place for the members of the eternal realms who would come down. 17. Human beings were forced to drink the water of forgetfulness by the first ruler, so that they would not know where they had come from. For a time the seed of light cooperated, 18, but it all happened for a purpose, that when the Spirit comes down from the holy realms, the Spirit may raise up the seed of light and heal it of what it lacks, that the whole kingdom of fullness may be holy and lack nothing. Chapter 14 1. I said to the Savior, Lord, will all souls be led safe and sound into the pure light? 2. He answered and said to me, These are great questions that have arisen in your mind, and it is difficult to explain them to anyone except those of the unshakable race. 3. Those upon whom the Spirit of life will descend and whom the Spirit will empower, will be saved, and will become perfect worthy of greatness, and free from all evil and interest in wickedness, in that realm. 4. They are interested only in the imperishable, and are always concerned about it, without anger, jealousy, envy, desire, or covetousness. 5. They are concerned only with their existence in the flesh, and even while they bear the flesh, they look forward to the time when they will meet those who receive them. 6. Such people are worthy of eternal, imperishable life and calling, for they endure all things, and endure all things, in order to end the strife, and attain eternal life. 7. I said to him, Lord, what will become of the souls of people who have not lived this way, but on whom, nevertheless, the power and the spirit of life have descended? What will happen to them? 8. He answered and said to me, If the spirit descends upon them, they will most certainly be saved and transformed. 9. The power must descend upon all people, for without it no one could stand. 10. After birth, if the spirit of life grows and the power comes and strengthens the soul, no one can lead this soul astray with evil deeds. 11. But people on whom the contrary spirit descends are deceived by this spirit and go astray. I said, 
Lord, where will the souls of these people go when they leave the flesh? 13. He laughed and said to me, The soul that has more power than the contemptible spirit is strong. It escapes from evil, and through the intervention of the imperishable one, it is saved and led to eternal rest. 14. I said, Lord, where will the souls of people go who do not know to whom they belong? 15. He said to me, The despicable spirit grows stronger in such people when they go astray. This spirit places a heavy burden on the soul, leads it to evil deeds, and casts it into oblivion. 16. After the soul leaves the body, it is handed over to the authorities who have been born through the first ruler. 17. They bind it with chains, throw it into prison, and insult it, until it finally emerges from oblivion and gains knowledge. This is how it attains perfection and is saved. On 18 I said, Lord, how can the soul become young again and return to its mother's womb or to humanity? 19. He was glad when I asked him about this, and he said to me, You are truly blessed, for you understand. 20. This soul needs to follow another soul in which the spirit of life dwells, because it is saved through the spirit. Then it will never again be brought into the flesh. 21. I said, Lord, where will the souls of people who once had knowledge but then fell away go? 22. He said to me, They will be taken to the place where the wretched angels go, where there is no repentance. They will be kept there until the day when those who have blasphemed against the Spirit are judged and punished eternally. Chapter 15 Chest, I said, Lord, where did the wretched spirit come from? 2. He said to me, The common Father is great in mercy, the Holy Spirit, universal, the one who is compassionate and who works with you, that is, the afterthought of the enlightened beforethought. 3. The Father raised up the offspring of the perfect human generation. 4. When the first ruler realized that these people were exalted above him and could think better than he, he wanted to take over their thought. 5. He did not know that they were superior to him in thought, so he could not take over them. 6. He devised a plan with his authorities, who are his powers. Together they raped Sophia and produced something repulsive. Fate, the ultimate, fickle bond. Fate is like this because the powers themselves are fickle. 7. To this day, the Father is harder and stronger than anything that gods, angels, demons, and all generations of human beings can face. For from fate have come all iniquity, injustice, and blasphemy, the bondage of forgetfulness and ignorance, and all grievous orders, serious sins, and great fears. 9. Thus, the whole of creation has been blinded so that nothing would know the God who is over all of them. 10. Because of the bondage of forgetfulness, their sins have been hidden. They have been bound with dimensions, times, and seasons, and fate is Lord of all. 11. The first ruler lamented all that had been born through him. Once again he made a plan and decided to bring a flood upon the human world. 12. 
However, the enlightened greatness of the forethought warned Noah. He announced this in turn to the entire human family, the offspring of humanity. But those who were strangers did not listen to him. 13. It did not happen in the way Moses said. They hid in an ark. Rather, they hid in a certain place, not only Noah, but many other people of the unshakable race. They entered that place and hid in a bright cloud. 15. Noah knew his supremacy. With him was the enlightened one who had illuminated them, since the first ruler had brought darkness over the whole earth. 16. The first ruler formulated a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of humanity, so that they would take wives and raise a family for his pleasure. 17. At first they were not successful. When they had proven that they were not successful, they gathered together again and devised another plan. 18. They created a despicable spirit similar to the spirit that had descended, in order to adulterate souls through this spirit. 19. Then the angels changed their appearance to resemble the companions of these women, and filled the women with the spirit of darkness they had concocted, and with evil. 20. They brought gold, silver, gifts, copper, iron, metal, and all kinds of things. 21. They made the people who followed them suffer, leading them astray and deceiving them. 22. These people grew old without experiencing pleasure and died without finding the truth or knowing the God of truth. 23. In this way the whole creation was enslaved forever, from the beginning of the world until now. 24. The angels took wives, and out of the darkness they produced children like their spirit. 25. They closed their minds and became stubborn through the stubbornness of the despicable spirit until this day. Chapter 16 1. Now I am the perfect foreknowledge of everything. I transformed myself into my offspring. I was born first, and I passed through all the paths of life. 2. For I am the abundance of light. I am the remembrance of the fullness. I entered the realm of great darkness and continued until I entered the middle of the prison. 4. The foundations of chaos shook, and I hid myself from the inhabitants of chaos, for they are evil, so they did not recognize me. 5. A second time I turned and followed. I had come from the inhabitants of light. I am the remembrance of the previous thought. 6. I entered the midst of darkness and the center of hell and turned to the task before me. 7. The foundations of chaos shook and were about to fall upon those who dwell in chaos and destroy them. 8. I hastened to return to the root of my light, so that the inhabitants of chaos would not be destroyed prematurely. 9. Yet again, a third time, I went forth. I am the light that dwells in the light. I am the remembrance of the former thought. 10. I wanted to enter into the midst of darkness and into the center of hell. I illuminated my face with light from the consummation of this world, and I entered into the midst of this prison, the prison of the body. In the leaven I said, Let whoever hears arise from his deep sleep. 12. A sleeper wept and shed bitter tears. 
Wiping them away, the sleeper said, Who pronounces my name? What is the source of this hope that has come to me, dwelling in the bondage of prison? 13. I said, I am the forethought of pure light. I am the thought of the virgin spirit, which has raised you to a place of honor. 14. Arise, remember that you have heard, and seek your root, for I am compassionate. 15. Protect yourself against the angels of misery, the demons of chaos, and all who would catch you, and beware of deep sleep and the trap in the center of hell. 16. I raised up the sleeper and sealed the sleeper in bright water with five seals, so that death would not prevail from that time on. 17. C. Now I will ascend to the perfect kingdom. 18. I have finished discussing everything with you. I have told you everything, so that you may take note and communicate it secretly to your spiritual friends. For this is the mystery of the unshakable race. 19. The Savior communicated these things to John so that he would write them down and safely. He said to him, Cursed be everyone who exchanges these things for a gift, food, drink, clothing, or anything else. 20. These things were communicated to John as a mystery, and then the Savior immediately disappeared. 21. Then John went to the other disciples and reported what the Savior had said to him. Jesus the Christ. Amen.